funny you showing up on this day in particular. We've been helping people escape the city on foot. It's a dangerous route to my father's lab, through the old canals. Today, we're finally on the verge of having a better way. <laughs> Here, let me buy you a drink. Oh, and by the way, nice to finally meet you. Blast that little... Where did she get to? Lamar! Come out of there! Uh-oh, everything all right, Dr. Kleiner? Oh, uh, hello, Alex. Well, uh, almost all right. Lamar has gotten out of her crate again. If I didn't know better, I'd suspect Barney of trapping and... My goodness. Gordon Freeman. It really is you, isn't it? I found him wandering around outside. Bit of a troublemaker, isn't he? We owe a great deal to Dr. Freeman, even if trouble does tend to follow in his wake. I must say, Gordon, you come at a very opportune time. Alex has just installed the final piece for our resurrected teleport. I can't take any credit for the breakthrough, Doctor. Nonsense. Your talents surpass your loveliness. <laughs> Let's just see if this thing works, okay? Well, is he here? There you are. Man, Gordon, you stirred up the hive. We can't keep him here long, Doc. It'll jeopardize everything we've worked for. Don't worry. He's coming with me. Uh, that's right, Barney. This is a red-letter day. We'll inaugurate the new teleport with a double transmission. You mean it's working? For real this time? Because I still have nightmares about that cat. No, no. There's nothing to be nervous about. What cat? We've made major strides since then. Major strides. What cat? Doc, since he's not taking the streets, you might as well get him out of his civvies. What? Oh, dear. You're right. I almost forgot. Barney, I'll give you the honor. <laughs> I've got to get back on my ship, but okay. Here we go. Ah! Damn it! Get it off me! Lamar! There you are! I thought you got rid of that pest. Certainly not. Never fear, Gordon. She's de-beaked and completely harmless. The worst she might do is attempt to couple with your head. Fruitlessly. Get that thing away from me! Here, my pet. Up, up! No, not up there! No! No! Careful, Lamar! Those are quite fragile! Oh, fie. It'll be another week before I can coax her out of there. Yeah, longer if we're lucky. <laughs> Barney, you're not an animal person. <sighs> <clears throat> Let's get a move on. Gordon, I see your HEV suit still fits you like a glove. At least, the glove parts do. I've made a few modifications, but I'll just acquaint you with the essentials. Now, let's see. The Mark V hazardous environment suit has been redesigned for comfort and utility. Oh dear. Doc, we don't have time for this. At least get that suit you stuff, Gordon. Good idea. There's a charger on the wall. I've modified your suit to draw power from Combine energy outlets, which are plentiful wherever they patrol. Meanwhile, let's get this show on the road. Cleaner's waiting. This way, Gordon.
this way, Gordon. Gordon, why don't you position yourself near the panel over there and wait for my word? Isaac, are you there? Yes, yes, Eli. Bit of a hold-up on this end. You'll never guess who found his way into our lab this morning. Uh, that's not who I think it is. Indeed it is, and it's our intention to send him packing straight away in the company of your lovely daughter. Are you ready for us, Dad? We're all set on this end. Then let's do it. Let's see. The massless field flux should self-limit, and I've clamped the manifold parameters to C1 base and LT orbifold. Conditions could hardly be more ideal. That's what you said last time. Hey, uh, yeah, about that cat. Initializing in three, two, one. No, fiddlesticks. What now? Uh, Doctor, the plug. Uh, dear me, you're right. Gordon, would you mind plugging us in? That's it. Very good. Final sequence. Commencing now. I can't look. Did it work? See for yourself. Hey, Doc. Oh, thank goodness. My relief is almost palpable. Fantastic work, is it? Well, I can't take all the credit. Dr. Freeman proved an able assistant. Let's go ahead and bring Gordon through now. Right you are. Speak to you again in a few moments. Good job, Gordon. Throwing that switch and all. I can see your MIT education really pays for itself. All right, Barney. Your turn. Gee, thanks. Gordon, as soon as you're in position, we'll send you to Eli's. And not a moment too soon. Excellent. Initializing in three, two, one. Uh, Barney, if you'd be so kind. Good luck out there, Gordon. Yes, indeed. We're ready to project you, Gordon. Bon voyage, and best of luck in your future endeavors. Final sequence. The hell? What is it? It's your head of freaking head hopper! Hey, Gordon! The Citadel's on full alert. I've never seen it lit up like that. Get out of City 17 as fast as you can, Gordon. Take the old canals, right? They'll get you to Eli's lab. It's, it's a dangerous route, but there's a whole network of refugees, and they'll help you if they can. I'd come with you, but I gotta look after Dr. Kleiner. 
Oh, and before I forget, I think you dropped this back in Black Mesa. Good luck out there, buddy. You're gonna need it. During long expository scenes such as this one, Valve prefers to let the player look and walk around freely rather than seizing player control for a cutscene. These scripted sequences are densely packed with detail and optional interactions, and the player can decide where to focus his or her attention. This method of storytelling helps to build immersion through interactivity, and allows returning players to entertain themselves with things they might have missed the last time they played. If I didn't know better, Those who had I'd played the first Half-Life were very impressed with the sparse and primitive dramatic scenes within the game. This positive response inspired Valve to push the boundaries of in-game dramatics in Half-Life 2. In order for the game's characters to be compelling, they needed to have realistic and expressive faces. After trying to achieve this via several methods, and being unhappy with the results, they stumbled upon the work of Dr. Paul Ekman, who wanted a clinical way to describe overall facial expressions. He accomplished this by breaking the range of facial expressions down into 40 or so small facial adjustments, like the raising of an eyebrow or the puckering of the lips. By understanding how these adjustments combined together and affected each other to form expressions, a system could be formed that would recreate these small adjustments on a computer-generated face, achieving the realistic and expressive faces that are a hallmark of Half-Life 2. What this cat? was the first choreographed scene created for Half-Life 2, and was used as a template for similar scenes throughout the rest of the game. Scripts went through many revisions with the aid of feedback from the animators. It was important that the scenes be engaging and interesting for the players watching it, and for the animators creating it. Once the scripts were in the final stages, the lines would be recorded and turned into a radio play. These scenes needed to convince players that the world and characters in it were real and tangible. This was accomplished through visible, physical interactions between different characters, and between the characters and their environment. A handshake or hug between characters, or having someone pick up an in-world object and present it to the player, went a long way toward making Half-Life 2's world appear tangible. Power armor is common among first-person shooters. Its primary purpose is to provide an in-world explanation for important gameplay elements, like why the player can take so many bullets, and the existence of a heads-up display. The HEV suit in particular is useful as it alerts the player of environmental hazards, as well as the current status of Gordon's health. Half-Life 2's HEV Mark V appears to be composed mostly of a Kevlar or chainmail-like material, which seems far more realistic than Half-Life 1's rigid and metallic design for the Mark IV. In fact, the Mark V was to be much more flexible, resembling a leather torture suit. However, this was inevitably scrapped, presumably due to a more familiar design that was faithful to the original game. Time to suit up, Gordon. The teleport sequence you just witnessed served several purposes. It effectively separates Alex and Gordon, alerts Dr. Breen and the Combine of your return as a viable threat, and sets the player off on their journey with a clear goal in mind reach Black Mesa East. Several instances of content otherwise cut from the game can also be spotted in this scene, such as the barren sandy wastelands and the ichthyosaur. Here Gordon Freeman is reunited with his iconic crowbar. Having a commonplace tool as the initial weapon of the Half-Life games helps establish Gordon as an ordinary person being thrust into extraordinary circumstances. It also helps to reinforce the fact that while the series is full of outlandish sci-fi elements, it still has its basis in the real world.